The mobility aids and assistive devices is what we're going to talk about next because we want you to not have to do as much help as you can. We want them to have the ability to do that with the assistive devices because the trip to the bathroom or anywhere in the house or outside of the home is always easiest when the right assistive devices are prescribed and used. And it's like glasses. You need to know what your glass prescription is and some of these devices are prescribed because of the certain level of frailty that the person might be. So these are just some of the devices and we're going to talk about them more in detail. It isn't something you randomly go to the store and pick up. It is something that based on your performance when we do certain tests, they recommend that you need either a cane, some Nordic poles, a three-wheel walker, four-wheel walker, two-wheel walker. You need one with handbrakes, big wheels. You need one with a certain height for the seat or you need a certain back support because of the person's posture. So these are things where the physiotherapist would do an assessment and tell you exactly what you needed and how to adjust the height and how to use them. It takes about 43 steps to learn how to use a walker. It's just like learning how to drive a standard. And so it's not something you're just going to hand them and off they go. So there's one test that we do that's called the Berg balance test. Both OTs and physiotherapists also do this and we are going to prescribe it just like we would these glasses. And in general, this is, there's all sorts of issues that go into a decision, but basically a perfect balance score would be a 56 out of 56. And if somebody tests that way, they don't need any aids. If they score around a 48, meaning they can't stand on one foot very well, they can't squat very low, and if they get their feet too close together, they would tip over, they might need a cane. If your score drops down to now where you're having trouble turning around or just leaning and reaching, then we might give you some Nordic poles if you want to have a little more support when you're going for your walk. It's not something you generally use around the apartment or uh, going up and down stairs, certainly, but it is certainly something that some people are using, especially those who are resistant to using a cane or a walker. And they do look cool um, because it looks like you're uh, trekking um, like you would uh, snowshoeing. When your score drops down to around a 40, this is when you're starting to have trouble getting up from a chair. You're having trouble just being able to reach down to the floor to pick something up and come back up. And if you stand up too quickly or you turn too quickly or turn your head, you may stagger. And so then we move into probably a four-wheeled walker. If you're able to remember how to use it correctly, that's important. It gives you a breaks and it gives you a place to sit if you should get tired. There is a four-wheeled walker that can convert into a wheelchair. It's one of my favorites because sometimes if you have somebody who's using a transport chair or a wheelchair, the caregiver's doing all of the work. Whereas if you have a walker-wheelchair combination, the, the person themselves can walk a certain distance and then if they get tired, you can convert it over into a wheelchair and you can do the rest of the work for them. When the score gets down to around a 30, that's when they're really having trouble standing and letting go. So if they let go, they tend to fall backwards. And so they're really dependent on touch and holding on to something to maintain their ability to stand safely. Or they may have broken a hip or have a lot of pain or weakness in the leg muscles and they need to push down on the walker and if you're using a four-wheel walker, it would scoot out from underneath you. And so that's not safe anymore. So we may prescribe a two-wheeled walker because now you have to push down fairly hard in order to take the steps that you need to take. It does require more energy. It's not as easy as those with four wheels, but it certainly is more stable. When somebody gets down to where their balance score is below 20, then that's somebody who may not be walking by themselves. They may need a wheelchair for most of their um, travels. They may be able to walk, certainly with someone's help, and we certainly see that all of the time. Our OTs and physios both do that. And caregivers sometimes can help them walk at a certain stage during the day when they have a lot of energy, but later on in the night, their balance and their fatigue level may be such that now they need to go from maybe using a walker to using the wheelchair or using a cane to using the four-wheel walker. And one of the things I want to mention is that if it's dark, your balance is worse. If you're on an uneven surface 
or if you have to go outside where it's windy or noisy and the ground isn't even, you may need a cane indoors, but you might need a walker outdoors. And so things can change. One of the best kept secrets is the correct height for a mobility aid. It is a scientific thing. It's not something we randomly look at and say, oh, that looks good. It has to be set correctly or the aid can actually make it more unstable for somebody to walk. You'll see in the picture here with the check mark the correct size for where a cane should be. If this gentleman was standing and letting his arm hang straight down, the height of that cane would be where his wrist watch would be. That's the correct height and generally if that's set at that height, then the elbow will be bent about 20 degrees. If the elbow's bent too much as in the third picture, he's going to have pain in the wrist and elbow and shoulder. He's going to put the cane too far away from him to be of much support and it may create more instability rather than less. If the cane is, or walker is too short, then they're actually leaning too far onto the cane and it's going to make them tippier when they walk. The same is true for a walker. And oftentimes you will see people walking with a walker and they're bent over. And their friends and their family are well-meaning and they'll say, oh, I don't think that your walker is set correctly because you're leaning over. If the person is leaning over, it's not necessarily because the walker or cane isn't set at the right height. It's because the person has arthritis or stiffness or weakness or balance loss and they can't maintain an upright position. So we encourage people to trust that their caregiver has set the walker and cane at the right height. And this is just a side view of where the right height is and what it makes the person look like with it. We have handouts that are available to those who are watching this series and they're available at any time um, for you if you would like to know the proper way to pick the right walking aid and to how to set it correctly. And that's available to anybody and they can just give the Alzheimer's Society a call if they're looking for those handouts.